Welcome to finding the average rate of change. So first of all, we should talk about what average rate of change is. And it's kind of self-explanatory. It's how much is the function changing between two values? So basically, if you were to have, let's say, an upside down parabola. If you look between here and here, between these two values, your function is increasing, right? So we would say that it has a positive average rate of change. But if you look between another two intervals, your function is on average decreasing. So you would say that it has a negative average rate of change because it's decreasing between those two intervals. The way to figure out the numerical amount at the rate it, at which it is changing is by using these formulas. Between two x values, you need to find the change in y over the change in x. You might actually recognize the change in y over change in x as y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. You might remember this as slope because when you have a straight line, your slope is never changing, right? Your slope is always going to be the same. It's increasing at the same rate throughout. So when it comes to linear functions, we refer to this as slope. But any other type of function, we call it the average rate of change because it's different depending on where you look on the graph. So let's try finding the average rate of change from a graph. In order to do the change in y over the change in x, you need two coordinates, right? I need y values. So I'm going to look at where my they're telling me to look at for my x values. And I'm going to get two coordinates. Those coordinates are going to be 1, 0. And the other coordinate is 3.5, watch your y-axis. Those values are counting by 2. So the y value is actually 17, approximately. You need your x1s and your x2, your y1, and your y2. Doesn't really matter which group is x1s, x, y1s, and which group is x2, y2. So if we take it, we have 17 minus 0 is equal to 3.5 minus 1. And if I were you, I would put that all in the calculator as is, using alpha y equals to get a fraction. And it's going to simplify it to 6.8. So your average rate of change between these two values is 6.8. And it makes sense that it's positive because your graph is increasing. Let's try it with a table. They're telling you to evaluate h of 2. That means x is equal to 2. So you're going to go to the table when x is equal to 2, and you're going to see a y value of 9. Same thing here. At h of 6, x is equal to 6. So be careful. You're going to where x is equal to 6, not h of x. And you're going to see that h of 6 is 30. Now they want you to find the average rate of change on the interval 2 comma 6. So instead of saying from 2 to 6, like in the last one we had x equals 1 to x equals 3.5, they can give you an interval. And you have to break the interval up yourself. So this is, this is from x equals 2 to x equals 6. And we have those coordinates, right? When x was equal to 2, y was 9. And when x was equal to 6, we have that y was 3. Pick one to be your x1, y1, x2, y2. And you're going to use the change in y over the change in x again. So 3 minus 9 over 6 minus 2. Put that all in the calculator at the same time.
and your calculator will tell you negative 3 halves, or you could write it as negative 1.5 since it is a terminating decimal. In other words, it doesn't repeat and go on. And think about your answer. Make sure it seems correct because we have a negative average rate of change, and that does make sense because your y values are decreasing. Last example, when you have the average rate of change from an equation. So they're telling you in this case from x equals negative 1 to x equals 3, and remember, they could give it to you as an interval as negative 1 to 3. That means the exact same thing, right? So your goal is you have two x values, so you want two coordinates. So if I were you, I would put this into y equals on your calculator, and I would go to the table. When you input an x value of negative 1, what do you get out? When you input an x value of 3, go to your table, what's the y value? If you don't have a calculator, you can actually plug it in and do negative 1 squared plus 3 and 3 squared plus 3 to get your uh, corresponding y values. But in this case, you're going to get 4 and 12. That means your coordinates from before. We just went from a table to coordinates. So you're going to do it again. Your coordinates are negative 1, 4 and 3, 12 with your x1, y1, x2, y2, and now change in y over the change in x. All of these examples are the same because in all of them you're getting two coordinates. And once you get the coordinates, change in y over the change in x. So 12 minus 4 over 3, be careful, 3 minus negative 1. Don't let the double negative confuse you. You end up getting 2. So 2 is your average rate of change because it's a positive 2. That means you're increasing, which makes sense because your table is increasing as well. So those are your three basic ways to find the average rate of change.